Elida's Curiosity Closet. I'm Elida. On today's show, we're going to be discussing business and being a businesswoman in particular. And we have a very special guest with us today, Susan Cullen, talking about being a businesswoman in Calaveras County. Hi, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you, Elida. Um, so how many years have you been in business? We've been in business uh, about 18 years in Calaveras County, and before that, oh, 20 years or so in the business world. And what type of a business did you have? In, uh, we had a coffee roasting company, and my husband was mainly the one who ran the business, but I helped him a lot, and we consulted on things because it's, we it's our partnership. We w enjoyed it very much. It was a unique business, and we did recently sell the business, so we're sort of retired at this point. That sounds yeah. really cool. I mean, like, I've always been kind of curious how and behind the scenes, not necessarily in what you're selling or what you're doing, like how the businesses work differently. Like if you owned a clothing business, how would that run differently from a food business behind the scenes? Not actually what you're selling, but as in how it's run. Um, probably not much different because what you're trying to accomplish is, to, is basically customer service and it's, it's selling things, whether it's coffee or clothing. You're appealing to a different um, a clientele maybe because maybe you're going to be selling to men and women in a coffee shop a lot of uh, women's clothing of course men are going to be customers too but it's it's more customer service and how you approach your customer and creating the desire for your product no matter what it is and um, treating them well and having them come back repeatedly and um I know that depending on where you're working in the business, you probably need education and all the other stuff. Have you found that people who've worked in college to get to that point have worked better than people who learned on the job? Well, of course, that depends on the area that you want to get into in business, but um, I'd say that anyone who wants to work hard has the capabilities of doing anything they want. Um, college does help because it helps it shows that you can achieve something when you have your college degree. In, in a retail venue, it's not necessarily essential. More than that, it's essential to be a hard worker and have a good face for, for the company that you work for, to be pleasant and um, stress that customer service aspect of it. But in other areas of business, you may need to be an educated a little bit more. I know that also high school is very, very important. Um, everyone always says math if you want to be in business, but I don't necessarily think that. I always thought you, the other topics would be important, like English and history, so you'd be able to you know, talk to your customers better. Well, I think that all, all the different disciplines at school are um, essential, but math, math is really important. Unfortunately, it is, because you um, even though you have all the tools in this world of um, cash registers or point of sale equipment if you're in retail or you know computers to do your calculating for you it still is necessary to to understand the process so that you can make sure that you're doing things right correctly I had um, someone tell me once that history was really important because you need to know um, the background of where you're working it's like you know what's going on, like the business was there before you, why did they not succeed or did they sell it? And like, you know, the history of the place you can talk to your customers about it. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's true. I think you have to know about the business in which you're working. You, um, just as a general statement, I, I had this revelation one day when I was driving down the highway that if you don't know where you came from, you can't know where you're going. Oh, no, and this is, it's, it sort of sounds silly, but it's really true. And it goes for everything to do with your whole life. 
If you don't know where you came from, how do you know which way to go to get to, to your next destination mm -hmm. and, and your goals? So I think history is important, and actually I studied that in college. So wow. it's, it's one of my favorite things is history. And um, you're just saying a minute ago that math, about math. And I know a lot of people who are great at math. I know a lot of people who are really bad at it and really struggle. So what types of math do you find you use on a daily basis, like algebra or basic math? Um, I would say probably just basic math, but a little bit of algebra, too. And I use the calculator a lot. <laughs> But just the basic math, um, in, in the jobs that I've had in, in my uh, current, what I do now as a part-time job is do, do a little bookkeeping. I don't use um, things like geometry, but, you know, the concept is there. I know it's, so important to, it's important to have the background in mathematics. I know so many people are going to be so happy here you don't have to use geometry. Yeah. <laughs> That's just kind of one of those things. Yeah, pi r square or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's also, because there's so many different types of people, and I know a lot of different people would like to be in the business, but some are shy, some are outgoing. What kinds of positions do you think are out there, you know, for um, if someone who's shy wanted to be in business, what would you recommend? Well, I think one, one thing is people... Um, want to get over their shyness if they can and it's the best way is to just jump right into something that puts you in front of other people because shyness comes from a feeling of um, maybe a lack of confidence but if you realize that when you're behind the counter you're the expert at whatever you're you're doing and you can um, put that forth to, to your customers then you will feel more confident with yourself so in in a lot of the retail businesses which there are a lot in the in our area that's where you're going to be focused in front of the customer because that's the necessary thing and really nothing happens until somebody sells something so you know it's it's that that will build confidence and then there are other jobs that are behind the scenes like if you're in a restaurant um, possibly doing prep work or um, helping clean up and things of that nature. But when you're in front of customers, you'll come out of yourself. You'll want to. And um, so different talents and traits, like we were saying shyness and everything, like what do you think helps the most? I mean, what type of person have you seen really succeed in the business world? I think people who are not afraid to take a little bit of a chance and to stretch their, themselves because if you, if you are feeling over, overly shy or reserved and you stretch yourself a little bit, you're going to um, get that feeling of uh, achievement and you're going to um, come forth a little bit more. And, uh, and also when you're working for someone else, you, you want to put forth your best effort for them because you're an important part of the su success of that business, and if if the business is successful, then you are too. And um, if you're if you're in the background, you know that's okay too. But you have to remember that you're part of the team. And um, have you seen any like really big successes? Seen someone go from super shy to being outgoing or go from I don't like people to being wow maybe people aren't so bad I think I know one. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no I really um, yes I have I've seen people do that they've come out and sh uh, just shown because they had that confidence and um, they gained it yeah it's it's definitely wonderful to see that happen and I know that a lot of times people can be held back by what other people have said, what they've heard about at different businesses, and they can be really scared. Mm -hmm. um, I know that stereotypes do that a lot. Have you heard a lot of stereotypes being a businesswoman in Calaveras County and kind of breaking the ice on that? Yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't experienced that. And stereotypes are just what they, they are. They're stereotypes. So. You, when you're first starting out, if you're not comfortable in your own skin, then 
you know, that can inter interfere, but um, it's okay to be whatever you want to be, and that's the main thing. As long as you work hard and you keep trying and you, uh, you know, you respect the company that you work for or your own business, whatever it is, that you can overcome the stereotypes that exist. And um, have you heard any really good stereotypes? I mean, do you think those are true too? I'm not sure what you mean on that. Like a good stereotype, like someone saying, well, women obviously do jobs better than men. I mean, they're oh. not necessarily true, but would you agree with some of them? No, I think it's, I don't, I don't think that uh, women are any better or worse than men. Everybody's, as, as far as I'm concerned, as a person in business, we are all have equal capabilities if we choose to use them. So I don't, I wouldn't let that interfere. And I haven't, I mean, I think they still exist, partly, but I think you could overcome those stereotypes by your behavior and your actions as a young woman and as, you know, getting your experience in, in the working world. I, I remember those, when I was early in my business career working in sales, I had some men make a, advances, so to speak, but I, I made him feel comfortable by not ignoring it, basically. And he realized it was off, off limits, and he never did that again. So it's not like I had to slap him, but I, I had, by my actions and by my words, I put the kibosh on it, and that was that. So stereotypes do exist, but you can overcome them. Like, um, the most popular one I've heard is women should stay home and raise the family and everything. And I do understand that in some ways it can be very hard to juggle family and work, especially being a woman because, I mean, you're mainly yeah. what kids want. How do you juggle family and work at the same time? It, it is entirely possible, but you have, to have your, you have to know your priorities. And it's okay to put your family first. It's all... Also, uh, it is a balancing act. I did it for years, and it's, it is a balancing act um, to be able to do all the things that are expected of you in your, in your work and also be present to your family and home to cook dinner. Or I was lucky to have people that I worked with that were supportive of that, too. So. It can be just difficult, but you, if you put your priorities in the right order, then you can be successful also. I mean, you just seem so confident and comfortable with what you do. Like, I mean, I know you've done it for a while. You know what you're doing. <laughs> but I was wondering, has anyone really motivated you to be like this? Like, had someone really support you and be there for you? Yeah, I think um, I would say my family has always been very supportive. My mother and father were very, very supportive of me. And um, my husband, of course, and every all, all the people in my family have, have always been very supportive. And I think that's important, too, when you have that network of people around you that will help you to, to prop you up in a, in a way if you, if you feel down about something or, you know, not sure of something. So it's good to have that. And um, when people are always there to say you're successful, there's usually someone there who says, oh, you're not going to make it, you can't do it. Has that ever happened to you? You know, I, if, if it has, I, I don't recall. I just, um, or if it has and I, if it did happen, I just ignored it because I am who I am. And I, I, did, I worked hard did what I had to do and, you know, made a success of, of it, so. Like, how hard is it to be that confident and comfortable with yourself in such a world that's kind of topsy-turvy? Well, I can, I can definitely see how it's, it's difficult in today's world for young people. Um, but it's just a matter of that support group that you have with your family. That's really important. And it's, 
a matter of understanding. I think that, you know, knowing you when you were younger and seeing how you've come along and become more um, confident, it's a matter of maturity as you come along in your life and you real realize, you know, you're in charge. You're the one you have to report back to yourself. And not only to your, you know, if you work for somebody else, yes, you have things that you need to do to to be a good employee or if you have your own business, you have goals to meet and that, but it's it's reporting back to yourself is what makes you strong and realizing, look at, in the mirror and say, I'm worth it, I can do it. Did you always want to be in business, always be like this? I At one time I wanted to be a teacher and then um, I had a, an experience helping a uh, in a teaching environment and I, I was just overwhelmed with the responsibility and I thought nope this is not what I want to do <laughs> and I um, I went a different direction but I, I have my degree in history but you know I didn't go into teaching. Do you recommend for um, young women or young men to go out and try the things that they think they want to do because I hear so many people say I want to do this when they're young and then they keep going even though they end up hating it because they said well I want to do it when I was young so I better want to do it now. Yeah. No it's really important if you have a way of getting involved in something that is your passion then you you want to try and get in even if it's down on the ground floor if you're if you wanted to be in a work in a television studio and you know you have to get in the, you can get in at the ground floor and start doing things. If you want to be um, working at an office, maybe you start helping them do filing and, you know, putting uh, papers in the files or, or cleaning the desks or whatever it is. But it's, as a young person, just get started doing something that, that you like. And look for your areas that you want to be, you know, that are your passion. You don't have to do it all the time. It may not be the thing that makes you money, but find the thing that would stimulate you to feel good about yourself. And I notice um, it's always fun to watch people after they've worked for some place for a while because mm -hmm. they learn like cool new tricks and like, oh, I know how to make this go faster, this would be better. Yeah, that's um, really. What are some of the cool things you've learned in business? Um, this is going to sound silly, but I've been learning a lot about. Uh, accounting software called QuickBooks and I have found so many new tricks that I can just do things really fast that's my my new my new thing is doing bookkeeping <laughs> so I found a lot of little tricks that are, it's fun to get to know something and then somebody calls you and says well how do I do this and that and then you can just tell them and it's, it's almost like being an expert now a little junior expert kind of so fun. <laughs> yeah and so you apply them to daily life like in business. Would you like, you know, when you learn a lot about math, is that able to be applied to your daily life? Or is yeah, it just it is, cause, too silly? <laughs> you know, when you um, just think about if you had to hang a picture on the wall, you'd have to know about leveling and measuring and um, you might have to learn about some angles and, you know, use your geometry. <laughs> oh no. Or We're cooking. Doing... Cooking is another one. Fourths, thirds, grams, yeah, that pounds, seems easy, then. ounces. <laughs> oh no. Um, and once your business gets to a point where it's like healthy and it's, you know, moving along, like you've mm -hmm. got everything in line, what type of advertising seems to work up in Calaveras County? Well, in Calaveras County, I'd say. A lot of the businesses are dependent on um, local customers, so maybe local print ads, um, promotional uh, advertising, that kind of thing. Um, if you're a bigger business, you're going to want to do a little bit broader, and if your customer base is pretty uh, fairly uh, broad-based. The other thing is uh, internet is really important now because a lot of people do um, business over the internet. So you want to have your website, I think, and even if you're a small business, I think you should be focusing on your website. And um, I see a lot of different kinds of retailers at events, like you go to Grape Stomp and you'll see 
the different retailers, did you guys ever do anything like that? Um, we supported the community with um, maybe making a donation to some of the organizations like Business Association or the Community Club or the Michelson School, things like that. The Lions Club, we did donations like that to support the community. And that's more how we um, did our, our goodwill, so to speak. And sometimes I wonder if advertising up here really helps. Like when you see the movie theater advertisements and stuff, because like you said, so much of it is word of mouth, just going around and. Yeah, I think, I think it does help. It's part of the, the um, reaching out to your customer base, which is necessary. It may not have been as necessary for us to do that, but it is necessary to do it. So and reaching out to the customer base by either print or internet or promotional things that you do. Like, I mean, there's just so many types of advertising. The one I see a lot now is you'll see the sign out front of like a restaurant or something mm -hmm. that says, you know, Monday deal. Does that really bring in customers? I've always been curious about that. How yeah, well does that? I think, I think sometimes that does, um, you, you know, some businesses run a senior citizen special on a certain day, which is not a bad thing, or uh, maybe the um, we have a lot of wineries in our area, so we have wine club specials, people who belong to the wine club, so that stimulates purchases of wine, plus it gives the customer a little discount, and then it just generates more and more with its activity, acti you know, things like that. So, yes, you know. And is it easy to, after you've been in business for a while, to tell a very desperate business from a business that's having no problem in the way of their advertising? I, would, I don't know that you'd be able to tell that from the advertising. It, it might be more apparent if they're not advertising and they were, that might be a sign, but it would be hard to know that from advertising. It's, more in, in, you know, advertising is a good idea, but you wouldn't be able to tell whether a business is succeeding because of it or not, really, I don't think. <laughs> like, I know when you, like, um, best example I can think of is Geico commercials, you know, they go on and on and on, over and over and over uh -huh. again, and you get tired of it. How do you keep people from getting tired of your advertisement? Well, I think you have to refresh it every now and then. You know, if you take that that particular ad for an example, they they don't run the same exact thing over and over and over again. But so it's it's a, a refresh refreshing. If you're going to do that kind of advertising that's visual, then you want to change it up a little bit. So you want to uh, be promoting. Uh, something maybe slightly different each time and bringing something new to the attention of the customer or potential customer. And the same thing would, would happen in any of our local businesses. You know, that, that would be the goal. I know that when you go to a business, whether it's food or clothing, they might have something you really like, but they're constantly changing it to kind of, you know, keep it, I guess, up and going. Yeah. It annoys a lot of people, and I was wondering why they did that. Um, I think it, in a clothing store, you want to. I think that what you want to do is you want to move things around because it makes it look fresher and newer, even though it might be the same products. In the in a restaurant, if you have a, a pretty good customer base, you don't want to necessarily change the menu all the time because you your customers expect a certain thing at that restaurant. And so they, they get used to it and they, that keeps them coming because they like what you do. So that, that um, but if, if people change things up in retail, it's more because of seasonal or um, just putting a little bit different look. So you might see something different when you come into the store. If you went to a clothing store, you'd see maybe the same blouses that were over there are over here now, but now you look at them because they're in a different place. So it's that kind of, it's that mentality of, of uh, you know, catching the customer's attention. 
I hear a lot um, that people who run a business, like they'll only go for their product, even if there's like something similar to it. They might go. They'll only go for theirs, just because you know it's their product. And I haven't really seen that as much as people say it is. Does that happen? Well, I mean, if you let's use that as as an example, if as we owned our coffee shop, I wouldn't buy Starbucks coffee. I hate to put the name on it, but the S word coffee. <laughs> but what I I would buy. Maybe out traveling, I might buy a cup, but I wouldn't, because we had that product, there was no sense in doing that. It, it would be the same thing. However, if you are buying other products, of course, um, if you're a winery, you might buy somebody else's wine to try it. You might, if you have a clothing store, you might go somewhere else to shop from time to time, but. So, why do you love working in this business so much? I I think I like to work. I th I just think that's what um, I'm happy doing. A lot of different things I've done in my life. Different um, working in electronics and sales, run, helping my husband run our coffee business, and now doing some bookkeeping. I just I like the activity, and I have my I have free time now that I'm a little older and sort of retired with a small r <laughs> so i do other things too but i just i like working so i, like I guess being busy business career is not for someone who's lazy <laughs> right yeah. yeah that wouldn't be good lazy is not a good thing but you, you just can't be complacent either you want to be um able to get a uh a sensitivity about the business that you're working with and to have a feeling of ownership if you will because that gives you the uh, incentive to do well for yourself and for your company that you work for or if it's your own company of course that's what you want you want to be successful so you can't be complacent and you just have to have a passion for working hard what would you tell a teen looking into being in the business career I would say um, look for something that you want to get, you know, figure out what your goals are. Is it just to make money, which is a good thing, you know, then you can help support yourself or have money to spend for your activities that you like to do. Uh, look for something that might put you in your uh, future career path that you'd have some experience with. and. Um, just remember that you, if you're going to work for someone in the business world, that that's your focus is to make them successful. And by doing that, you gain confidence in yourself, and you have success for yourself, and you'll be you'll be making money and having a good time. If you could tell someone just one thing about uh, one more good piece of advice to help them out, I say. I think the most important thing is to have a sense of working hard and um, being productive. Well, that was, you know, very good, and I can definitely see where that would help. But thank you so much for joining us tonight. You're welcome, Alida. It was great to see you. Thank you, you too. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope to see you next time. And don't forget to like us on Facebook. Thanks. Bye.